All right, guys. Hi, and welcome to our to the last part of our series on making a procedural ice cream in Unity. So last time we left it with our circle, which was configurable here. We could change the resolution. And now we are going to start. I have a little roadmap as usual. We are going to start by refactoring the circle class. We are going to creating a circle class sorry, to refactor our scripts. So let's create it right now. Circle. All right, cool. Let's open it. I'm sorry, we have our neighbors are having some renovation work, so there is a little bit of background noise. I'm sorry. Okay. So the circle class won't be a mono behavior, so we can remove that, and we can also remove the start method and update method as I just did. The circle will have some uh, settings attached to it. So basically some basic stuff like um, the radius, uh, the resolution. Okay, so it's just some basic stuff as we had previously. Uh, the new thing here is the index because we are going to have a multiple uh, multiple circles, so each one will have an index that we need to, tr to keep track of. Uh, we also need to keep track of our center index, so this is the center vertex. We will be implementing some other uh, data like the position of the circle and its rotation. So the rotation is a quaternion. The quaternion here is just a way to represent the rotations in space. Don't be worried. I'm going to explain this step by step. Then we also want some other settings like um, a boolean to know if it's a cap, if the circle is capped or not. So it basically means are we going to draw the triangles or not? And another boolean to know if we do flip the triangles or not. Because in a cylinder, uh, let me try and show you. So hit play here. In a cylinder, we want this face to face the back vector and the other one to face the forward vector. Okay? So it's just a simple, it's just a simple variable to describe that. Then we're going to have our data. So it's basically just the vertices. So vertices and a list of integers, which are the triangles of our circle. All right, perfect. Let's now make a constructor for this. So public circle. Here we go. So the, say, the circle will take a bunch of arguments here. It will take the radius, the resolution, resolution, all right, its index in the list of circles, because as we said previously, we are going to have a bunch of circles, its position, position, and its rotation, a boolean, a boolean to know if it's capped, is capped, okay, and another boolean to know if it's flipped. All right, perfect. I think that's it. So let's configure all of these. So this dot radius equals radius. This dot resolution equals resolution. This dot index equals index. This dot position equals position. This dot rotation equals rotation. This dot is cap equals is cap and is slipped. Okay. All right. So now we need to also configure the center index. So if you remember well, let me open Affinity here. We have our center index here. So the center index is zero. Then we have the resolution and the other vertices. They are a resolution amount of vertices. And then we will have another circle with another center and so on. So the center index will be equals to the index of the circle times the resolution plus one. This plus one is according to the center. All right, perfect. After that, 
mm, we need to configure the vertices of our circle. So let me check here quickly. Create the vertices. Okay, so we are going to grab this function or method. And we are going to dro drop it here. Create vertices. We're going to change it a little bit right now. Okay, so let's call it in the constructor. Create vertices. And if um, if this circle is capped, we want to create the triangles. Triangles. Let me grab the method from the previous section again. Okay, Control C and drop it here <coughs> sorry all right so here the difference is it's that the resolution that is the resolution the resolution sorry uh, here too all right here the center of the circle won't be the vector 3.0 anymore it will be the position of our circle all right then what we can do here again is um, we need to take into consideration the rotation of the circle now it's because in the next section let me show you quickly again here to make the ice cream we are going to position a circle here then another one here but rotate it and then another one and another one and another one but all the circles need to be rotated to a certain extent so to rotate to rotate um, a point there is a quick method for that so we are going to say vertex equals the rotation times the vertex minus the center plus the center so it's basically a way determining the position of a point by a rotation around a pivot okay so you can Later on, we will make a utils class that will contain all of, all of our utils functions and to make our life easier. All right, perfect. Let's now jump to the create triangles method. So here it's resolution again. Here it's resolution. But the main difference here is that we aren't going to start from the index zero. Because if we start from the index zero, we are always going to make the triangles for the first circle and dismiss the others. So here instead, we need to start our loop from the center index. And here we're going to go also to the center index. It's like offsetting the loop for each circle. All right. So instead of zero here, it's center index. Here. It's still going to be i plus 2, i plus 1. Here it's center index plus 0, so center index. And here is center index plus 1. And here we can add uh, resolution plus center index. All right, I think we are pretty much done here. Oh, one thing I forgot here. We need to take into account the flipped boolean so if we want to flip our circle so we saw how to do that previously so here we can say if if it's not flipped we will set up the triangles this way else in case we want to flip the circle we are going to copy these triangles and add them in the opposite order all right same thing for here if we, it's not flipped. Uh, it's flipped. Sorry. Ah, oh, come on. It's flipped. All right. We are going to do that. And if it's flipped, else, we are just going to copy this, past it here, and invert it. Okay. Perfect. I think that we are pretty much done for our um, circle class now. All right. Now let's check our procedural circle class. We can remove the create triangles method. We can remove the androgismus. We can remove the create vertices because, because all of this happens here in the circle class. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I forgot something here. Here we want also to uh, return public uh, list, uh, maybe an array. Yeah. 
So let's return an array of vector three, get vertices. Because in the main class, which is procedural circle, we will need to access the vertices and the triangles of the circle along with the center index. Okay, so here we are just simply going to return the vertices dot to array. Same thing for the triangles, integer get triangles and yeah, triangles dot to array. And I think that we will surely need the center index too. So get center index. Okay, so let's return the center index. All right. So now we can clear this. Perfect. All right, so now we've just uh, refactored the circle class. Perfect. We've added the, the cap and flip bools. We've created an array. Now we are going to create an array, sorry. All right, so that's good. Add another circle, but flipped. We are gonna do that now. So now let's create a circle. Let's call it maybe circle zero equals new circle. Okay, let's not fill this for the moment. Once we've got our circles, just to test if everything is working as intended, we are gonna say uh, vertices dot add range circle zero dot get vertices. Okay, so we are adding the vertices of our circle and same thing for the triangles. So add range circle zero dot get triangles. All right, now we can configure our circle. So let's check. So let's add the radius, sorry, radius, the circle resolution. The index for now is zero because it's the first circle. For the position, we are going to set vector 3.0. The rotation will be quaternion.identity for now. It's just the base rotation, which is 0, 0, 0. Okay. Is it, a, is it capped? Yes, of course. So let's say true and flipped false. Let's not flip this one. Okay. Let's go back to Unity and check if everything is working as intended. And of course it's not, because we have a null reference exception here. All right, what's wrong? Oh, I did not set up the vertices and the triangles of the circle, sorry. So here I just forgot to say vertices dot uh, equals new list of vector three and triangles equals new list of integers. So now everything should be okay. Okay, let's hit play again. All right, perfect. That's perfect. The advantage, uh, the good point of this is that we can create as many circles as you wish now. So let's create another one. Circle, circle one equals new circle. So same thing, radius, circle resolution. Now it's index one. Let's put it um, at one on the, the Z axis. Quaternion.identity, same thing. We don't want to rotate it for the moment. It should be capped and it should be flipped too. All right. So let's add the vertices of and the triangles of this circle too. So let's say here circle one and circle one. All right. Let's hit play. Awesome. We've got our two circles here. Oh, we are getting somewhere, guys. All right. So one is flipped and the other not. That's perfect. So now we need to link these two circles. So let's select our procedural mesh. All right, I can see one, but not the other. Okay, so I'm gonna explain you, explain that in uh, Affinity Designer. All right. So what we want to do here, we have our two circles and yeah, don't, 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 don't read that, okay. We have our true circles here. What we want to do is connect them. So here to connect them, we are going to create triangles. So we are gonna connect the vertex index one with the five and the six. This will give us this triangle. And then we are going to connect the vertex index one with the sixth of the other one and the second of the first one. This will give us this triangle. And we need to create a loop once again, 
to do that for all of the vertices of our circles. Okay, so as written here, every vertex will have two triangles attached to it, basically. All right, let's do that now. So let's create a new method to link our first two circles. But before that, let's create a list of our circles, of circles, sorry, which will contain all of our circles. So let's call it circles, new list of circle. So first we want to clear it. So circles.clear. And now we have created our two circles. So let's say circles.add circle zero and circles.add circle one. All right. All right. Let's create a new method called link circles, which will take a first circle and a second circle as arguments. Okay. How are we going to link the circles? So we will need the um, center index of each and every circle here. So C0 index, maybe center index. Yeah, I think it's better. Equals C0 dot get center index. Same thing for the circle C1. All right. So we are going to create a loop for all of the vertices of each circle. So let's say four, it's going to start from index zero of course and here we're going to go to the resolution of the circle so circle resolution minus one because once again we have an issue with the last two triangles just to close the loop we will do that manually once again all right so here we are going to be setting saying triangles that add so we are going to add the first vertex of the circle zero so it's going to be index C0 center plus I plus 1. Okay. Then it's going to be C1. So the vertex, the first vertex of the second, uh, the second vertex, sorry, of the second circle. And then the first vertex in, of the second circle. Okay. So this should be the first triangle. Okay. First triangle. All right, let's, let's just test it, this out. So link circles, um, circle zero and circle one. Okay. I hope this works. Shaded, ah, oh, perfect. So you see it has created the first triangle for every vertex, but we just need to set the last one manually, as said previously. Okay, so let's set the second one now. We will say triangles.add, so it's the second triangle.add c0 center index plus i plus 1, so the first vertex of the first, um, sorry, the first circle. Now it's going to be the second of the first circle and the second one of the second circle all right let's try this try it out yeah it should be good ah uh, perfect we are getting there okay let's now complete the loop by setting the two last triangles okay so set the two last triangles we're gonna say triangles of add c0 center index plus the resolution because it's the last one then c1 plus one because it's the first one of the second circle and here it should be plus circle resolution okay so the last one of the second one oopsie okay let's take this copy it here now we have the, this should be the same one. Now we should have the first vertex of the first circle. And the, I think it's the, it should be the first one of the second one. Now, wait, wait, let's try it. Perfect, awesome. Oh God, okay, perfect. And now we can change the resolution. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I need to add that too. 
So just a quick change here. We want to take this method and put it in the update method. That way, whenever we change a, some settings, we can see the results right away in the game or scene window. So here, when I change the resolution, I can see that it's changing pretty well. Okay. Also, a quick side note here, we want to recalculate the bounds of our mesh whenever we change it. And we also want to recalculate the normals, oh, sorry, recalculate the normals of the mesh. So let's see what it changed. All right, perfect. Nice. Okay, so let's just, um, I don't like when it's that smooth. Let's change the color. All right, perfect. We can also change the rotation of the light. Oh, uh, no matter. That doesn't matter actually, but it matters a little bit. Okay, perfect. So now that we know how to link two um, circles, we just need to add a bunch of circles. Actually, that's as simple as that. So let's create another generic method for linking all of our circles. So private void link circles. All right. So in this, in this method, we are going to loop through all the circles. So circles that count minus one. And we are going to link the two first circles. So it's going to be circles I and circles I plus one. All right, and that's pretty it. So now we can link as many circles as we wish. So now here I'm just going to call link circles. They should give us the same result. And we are also create a method. I'm going to create a method called void create circles. Okay, so this is where we are going to create our circles. So let's remove this and just create uh, call create circles here. Oh yeah, I need to update this. So let's make a, another method again. Okay, private void update data. So this will update the vertices and triangles array with all the data from our circles. So let's grab this. Let's create a new loop, which is gonna loop through all of our circles. And we are going to add all of this beautiful data. Okay, so circles I, the vertices and triangles. Now we can remove this. Okay, seems very good right now. Oh yeah, we need to call the, the method to update that. All right. I really hope I'm, I, I'm trying not to rush on things, but here it's difficult. Oh, otherwise the video will will be one hour long actually so if you've got any questions or so like feel free to post a comment in the comment section and as usual i'm going to try and do my best to answer and explain as best as i can okay so let's create some yeah let's create some other settings regarding the ice cream so let's call it ice cream settings so a serialized field again. So let's say private integer um, circles amount. So it's going to be the resolution. Yeah, let's call it a resolution instead. Okay, your ice cream resolution. Ice cream resolution. Okay, maybe like, like so. All right. Maybe we want to also configure the amount of loops we want in our ice cream. So this should have a minimum again. So let's use the range attribute. It should have at least one loop and maybe maximum 20 loops. You can do as many, you can add as many loops as you wish here. Okay, we also need the um, radius to specify the radius of our ice cream. So let's say private float ice cream radius. All right, and maybe the max height of it. So let's say private float um, ice cream height. All right. This, this should be it. This should be it now. So create the circles. All right, let's jump to Affinity Designer here for a second. As I explained previously, we want to place our circles in a circular fashion. And the circles, 
Oh, it's not the radius of the circle that should be uh, that should diminish. It's actually the the radius of the ice cream that should diminish. So let, let's go step by step. All right. Yeah, I think we will need um, a step for our angle. So let's call it angle step equals 360 divided by divided by the resolution of our ice cream. Okay. So for ice cream resolution, we need to we will need to create a circle. Circle equals new not char but circle. Okay, then we will need to add it to our list. Okay, and I think that uh, that should be it here. But yeah, we will specify now the um, vector three position. We will start by setting the position of the circle. Yeah, let's not rush into things. So let's here say radius. Let's say resolution, circle resolution. Yeah, index. It's going to be the circle index i. The position will be position. And for now, let's just say quaternion dot identity for the rotation. Um, let's say that it's not capped, and it's not flipped either. Okay, so let's make things really easy now. Okay, let's say the position, set the position to vector 3.0 for now. All right, so we need to set the position. So we are gonna use trigonometry again. So position.x should be equal to the ice cream radius times the cosine of the conversion ratio times the index times the angle step all right and same thing for the z value okay so position that z equals this okay let's try this out first and then we can change the y position of it okay so the resolution of the ice cream will be something like maybe 20 circles it will have a radius of two and a height of three maybe all right and let's say we want uh, five loops. So let's hit play. All right, we are getting somewhere, guys. So now we have at least some circles that are in circle pattern. But we, we, we can see that we need to rotate the circles because now they are all facing the forward direction. All right, let's rotate them. So let's quickly set a new quaternion for the rotation. Okay, let's set it as an argument here. Rotation. So what will this rotation be? I think it should be. So we are going to rotate the circle around the Y axis. So let's say quaternion dot Euler zero on the X axis, something on the Y axis and zero, zero on the Z axis. So this little something here on the y-axis will be angle step because each time each circle has to be rotated just a little bit, but multiplied by the index of the circle. Yep. Okay. Let's try this out. And it's the other way around, but we've got a pretty cool shape here. I like it. Okay. So I think it should be minus here to rotate to rotate it around the y-axis in a counterclockwise fashion. All right, perfect. We are getting somewhere. We can now diminish the radius of the circles and also diminish or increase the resolution, increase the radius of the ice cream and nothing for the height, nor the loops for now, but we are, we are getting there. A quick thing I want to do is to cap the first and the last circle so let's have a quick boolean for that so is cap we want to cap the first one so if it's it's going to be a cap if i equals zero or i equals ice cream resolution minus one so let's drop this here and we also want to flip it if it's the last if it's the last circle so ice cream resolution minus one okay so let's check if that works. Hit play. 
Nice. So now the first and the last circle are capped and in the right direction. Perfect. So now what we want to do is add more loops or maybe add some offset on the Y axis first. Yeah, I think it's better. So let's say position dot Y equals I times some step here. So let's say Y step. Okay. And the step we are going to go up by will be, I think it should be something like the total height of the ice cream divided by the amount of circles we have. So we should be ice cream resolution here. Okay, let's try this. All right, perfect. So now if I increase the height of the ice cream, I can see that I can control this pretty well. Okay. I can increase the radius, diminish. Okay, nice. I like it. Okay, perfect. So next step is to add more loops to this. All right. So adding more loops means that we want to increase our angle step here. So here we should multiply the angle step by the amount of loops. All right, let's try. So now we should have five loops. Awesome. And when increasing the resolution, we can diminish the radius of the, oh, nice, I like it. So now we, we can have even more loops. Okay, it's like a customizable spring. Gosh, look at these guys. Isn't it awesome? Okay, let's add more loops here. Okay, perfect, we can increase the resolution. Okay, we're almost there. Anyway, so it's going to be five loops. Maybe it's going to be three here. Um, maybe, yeah, something like that. Okay, so now we just need to um, diminish the radius of the ice cream as we go up. Okay, let's copy this, these options here and pass them. Okay, so that we can save them for later. So now we just need to modify the ice cream radius here along the y-axis. Let's keep track of the <coughs> percent of the circle we are at. So current maybe circle percent equals i divided by the, by the ice cream resolution, which is the amount of circles we have. But I think it should be uh, inverted. So one minus this. So that way we're gonna start at one okay uh, let's mm, okay let's create a new variable a new float for the real ice cream radius so it's going to be two uh, it's going to be current circle percent yeah times the ice cream radius all right so as we loop through the ice cream resolution we should have more and more a greater i so a greater increment which will diminish the radius all right ah oh, perfect nice we have it guys we have it oh, perfect so now we can say that you have a fully configurable ice cream oh come on that's so good all right So now let's add some rainbow colors to our ice cream. So first thing you want to do is select your mesh here and change the shader. Let's configure the colors first. So let's make a colors array. Okay, let's call it colors equals new list of color. So we are going to clear it here, colors.clear. And here we want to add anytime we add a circle okay here we want to configure the colors so configure the colors so for j now i think it's the circle resolution we're going to add uh color dot okay so colors dot add of course but what color are we going to add equals we are going to use a hue saturation value color to make things easier so it's going to be color.hsv to rgb 
So we need to specify the hue dot, let's say hue, saturation will be dot nine and value dot nine two. Okay, so let's say hue equals. So the hue will be equals to the current circle percent times, actually I think it's times nothing. Yeah, it's actually just current circle percent because it's going from one to zero. We can say like here, yeah, we can say one minus this to go from zero to one. So let's add the color to add. All right. So we need to do that for each vertex. So it's going to be for circle resolution plus one. We should take into account the center of each circle too. Okay. So then we can say mesh.colors equal colors dot two array. All right, should be good. Let's try this out. Okay, that's what I thought. So here we need a vertex. So you want to use, you can write your own shader, but we are not here for that. But you can use the particles standard surface shader. It's using a vertex colors, so it's perfect for our case here. And yeah, I think that's it for now. We have a completely procedural ice cream made in Unity, guys. Perfect. I hope you liked the video. So if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Maybe drop a like. That really, help. that really helps. Thanks a lot. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.